X2X. You know about a little bit about the shorts with the short statuses on the stock. The fake news that's coming out. And I got a great ses uh, section at the end. Stay tuned for it. About the chip, the IC chip advantage that Lordstown Motors has. This is something nobody's talking about. And I think this is what Mike Burry's recent shorts are all about. Take a look at the video. Please shoot me a like. And guys, I need you to subscribe if you like this information. There ain't many of us Lordstown fans out here. I need every one of you to subscribe. Thanks. MXUX. I'm just going to start out here with a chart of today, which is, uh, you know, kind of grim, but not really. We had a tightening here in the Bollinger Bands, and then it just went down. And 478, it's up after hours. Um, take a look at after hours. 483. So there you go, after our trades. Let's just see if they're trending up. And uh, down a little bit, but whatever that's where we are with the um with the stock i just want to go over a couple other things before i get into the presentation this is a report that just came out by allied research it was rented it was mentioned in a monthly full article which was replete with errors and misinformation and i don't know if motley fool is doing this intentionally or if it's just incompetence but they are really creating problems for Lordstown, considering their distribution. Honestly, I mean, uh, the stuff that was said in this article, other than this report, uh, was ridiculous. Anyway, they, um, they talk about um, 2030 market. Uh, the hub motor market's going to be uh, $12 billion. And this is a 300 point, and it's by um, by uh, 2030. Um, Lordstown Motors, right here. Lordstown Motors is uh, mentioned prominently in this report, and they talk about uh, a lot of different things: vehicle deployment. But anyway, they say that the COVID uh, heard it. You can get the report if you want. It's a, it's a few hundred dollars. Uh, I just wanted to go over this after that chart. This is a little, this is not up to date. As, of course, the price isn't right. Uh, but uh, we got um, percentage of float. The short is... 27. It was higher. It might be a little higher now. That's how much of the float is short. And this is a chart I put together, which of course is backwards. Um, settlement date, short interest. This might be one day. There might be one day missing off this. So what I did here was I just wanted to see what the relationship was between the average daily share volume and the short interest. And again, this this would be time period zero, and this would be today. And this would be the trend here. And this would be the short interest, and this would be the total daily volume. So as you can see, we got a really big bubble here. But when the volume goes up, the average daily trading volume goes up. I believe this was the rash of institutional buys. Uh, the short goes down. And we got this going down a little bit at the end here. Um, anyway, just to say that there's a lot of short interest, a lot of short pressure on this stock. I think it's largely due to a lack of information and misinformation. Um, anyway, you can pause that. You can check that out if you want. Now, I just want to 
I'm just going to read this to you. It's kind of boring, but we're going to go through it. And uh, it's not going to take too long. It's going to be quick. Anyway, this is my uh, take on a couple different issues that have come up in the comments. And, and I think a real catalyst that may be coming up. Okay, this is Lord Sun. I'm not a financial advisor. Do not rely or make decisions on this. Okay, do your own DD. I'm not. I'm doing this for educational purposes. All right, on funding. Um, thing is, Mercedes came at this same point in time, a little bit before this in Tesla's histories. Mercedes got 10% of the company for cash input, which they sold cheap. So, substitute GM. Uh, another funding source they could pursue is Chamath, Matapatapatapitalon. Uh, he did cash for bonds, convertible bonds. I think they're paying one point or two points, something like that. Uh, I'm not even sure what a point is, but it's very close to the risk free rate. And they were convertible to stock. And he felt that uh, this was a better way to invest in the, the risky asset because if there was a bankruptcy, uh, the bondholders are held first. And then at a later date, when the stock is worth more, it can be converted to bonds. And of course, the company decides all the details on this but uh, these uh, convertible bonds uh, were very popular with chama they did very well with them and they were they made sense to the uh, uh, consumers and you know just regular bonds you know backed by assets you know that's typical bond financing and again they got a lot of assets there you know what i mean uh then you have you know commercial paper which I'm no expert on, but um, uh, bonds, this is bonds convertible to stock. And uh, commercial paper, you can get 90 day loans, 120 day loans, uh, depending what would the rate be, who would write it, but this is another thing you can get. Uh, you know, there's a stock opera offering, which is not optimal at this point. They don't want to do that, but they might. Once they can talk about actual orders, and, and this is a question I have. When are they going to be able to talk about orders? When is it going to be okay with the, with the uh, SEC? When are they going to say they have a product? After they have uh, National Highway Traffic Safety Center, uh, tra Traffic Center, uh, Association Certification on the PBV? Okay? Or is it going to be when they start production? But once they can actually talk about orders, they can borrow against receivables. This is very common. Okay? And... The stock price should go up, so they should have more options as far as financing. The question is, when? When is the SEC going to say? Because nobody wants to get arrested, and they don't want to. They don't want to create any more problems. When? So they're not allowed to talk about it till they have a product. What is the operational definition of a product? If someone out there knows, this is going to make a big difference for the company. I think it comes with this certification and running one production vehicle and then they could say it once they have that i think they're allowed to talk about their orders right now they got the sec on their neck they're not saying anything uh another idea for uh for this is uh, for funding is uh carbon credit arbitrage they're doing a three-year deal for uh gm i think it's for 75 percent of the credits but anyway i mean you know they could sell options they could free sell credits i mean whatever you know they can allow people to buy options on buying credits it's a whole other thing here um we went over rent out factory space they can sell hub motor units as according to that report from alliance uh, uh research they could also sell battery packs um and i have camping world here you know they were going to put uh Lordstown battery packs in their their trailers um uh, might not be camping world but it could be another camping manufacturer so so they can sell home motors they can sell battery for and they could manufacture for others as i said in my last video uh, bluebird you know frames drives drive trains 
So these are some different methods of funding. I am not a finance guy. I don't know a lot about finance. So this is what I'm saying. Don't take my word for it on the rest of this. I think the key is here when they could talk about, you know, up to this point, they this what Burns got in trouble with when he had the, the hard hat on and the, when uh, they attacked him. Uh, you know, he said, I can't talk about orders because we don't have a product yet. When do they have a product? Is that the National Highway Tra Traffic Safety Administration certification? Does that designate a product? And when they roll one off the, off the uh, line, does that designate a product? When they make one sale, does that designate a product? When that, when that happens, they're going to be able to talk more freely about what kind of orders they have. I think it's going to make a big difference. Now, this is a new topic that has come up that a lot of people aren't paying attention to. That's these uh, IC chips that go in the vehicles. Um, I'm just going to try to read this and go over it and follow this step by step. Manufacturers were dumped by car companies at the start of uh, COVID. So these chip manufacturers at the start of COVID, the, the, uh, the car companies shut down. They had no customers. They had to find new customers. They went to gaming and whatever else. Now all their stock is sold out. And they don't trust uh, they don't trust the car companies, and they, they they have a more diversified customer base now. And it looks like they are not going back to the car companies in any big way. Okay, uh, and I'll go over that in a second. Uh, Intel is working with the federal government for more capacity. Okay, this is like a very specific thing they're doing there. Uh, but they need six to nine months to start up. Um, that's what they say. I've actually done some work recruiting having to do with integrated circuit uh, manufacturing facilities. They are a giant robot. It is mostly robotics. It's a robotic clean room. Um, that is the environment. Uh, they're, you know, hundreds of million doll of dollars to build. Uh, the bigger they are, the more they um, they cost, obviously. Um, they are complex, but they do have it down. So as long as they have the chip designs, which Intel says they do or have access to, uh, they can build these, these factories and get them up and running. They, they said six to nine months. I'm thinking more like a year. Okay. So this is going to go on for at least... I would say nine months, okay? At least nine months, this chip shortage, if not more. And you know, how many will Intel, Intel is gonna have to build, you know, two, three plants or one giant mega plant or, you know, there's a lot of lot of demand for these chips. But anyway, this is, this is the solution that Biden uh, is working on and it's with Intel. INTC, I think it's a symbol. It's a trade at 52. Might be something to look into. It's not financial advice. Okay, now this is the big deal. Going forward, OEMs, Ford and GM, let's call, will not produce vehicles so that dealers have 120-day supply of cars on hand to sell. That is history. They're not going to do that anymore. They're not going to just spit out hundreds of cars, put them on the lots, and sell them. Okay, so a lot of these car lots have 120 days supply, even more than that, on their lot of cars to sell. Here's an example. Next month, Toyota, which is like one of the biggest car manufacturers in the world, is going to cut production 40%. That's in September. VW is closing a plant. Okay. Some, some uh, experts are saying there's going to be 7 million less vehicles manufactured, say, manufacturers say. Uh, the car companies are saying, well, you know, it's going to be next month. But the experts are saying this is not, this is for real. It's not made up. They're going to cut production way back. This is going to go on and on. And the way it's going to work is you will have to order your vehicle. Say you want to buy a Ford pickup. 
uh, you're going to have to order that, okay, with the company. If you want AC, you're going to have to pick the package that has AC and other upgrades, okay? So you're not just going to be able to say, oh, I want AC. You're going to have to get the AC and, uh, you know, the, the blah, 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 and the deer foam headliner and all the rest of it. There's going to be like 10 items in that package. It's going to increase the cost. So there's going to be no more. I just want one option. So you're going to have to order your vehicle. Your choice is going to be limited. Okay. Vehicle costs will go up. Wait times will be 90 to 120 days to get a car. Okay. That's going to be the way it is. No more end of the month sales. No more lot markdowns. No more negotiating the price. Uh, it's basically everybody's going to turn to the Tesla model. This is pretty much the Tesla model. Okay. Build the order. And car manufacturer profits are going to rise. Customers are going to get screwed, which is the American way. All right. There's going to be higher prices and fewer choices. All car makers are expected to follow this in response to this chip shortage. So it's just, it's just not going to be Ford or Toyota. They have to make cars to make money. That's what they're in business for. They have fewer chips, fewer cars. So if they're going to stay in business, the cars are going to have to be more expensive. So this chip shortage in regards to car companies and you know what the car companies don't care they say good we're just going to screw over the customers i mean gm ford legacy uh, dealers uh i suspect this chip situation is in part the basis for mike burry short of tesla because this is basically tesla's present model so so tesla isn't going to be able to cut back to this model this is their model uh so what are they going to do they're going to have to shut down they're opening all these new plants up where are they going to get the chips they're going to have to shut down these plants intermittently or pause the reopenings this is i believe the the core case for mike boy's shorts now tesla may come up with some genius idea but even if they want to build a plant to make their own chips it's going to take them a year and the other reason is short, short and arc invest because Tesla's their number one holding. So again, everybody's going to move to the Tesla model. Tesla's already at it. That means they're going to shut down. But this is a really being understated, underreported, and misunderstood uh, by the market, I think. According to my research, I've done quite a bit of research on this. Now let's talk about Lordstown Motor Company and chips, okay? It was said chips were pre-purchased for the first year of production. Okay? So they have them. They are not going to be construction constraint. They're going to be one of the few companies that's going to be able to run full tilt for the first year. Or to build the orders, the mysterious orders that we don't know what they are. They have enough chips to build them. So, that gives LMC, I mean, if they want to order a bunch of fleet lightning pickups, <laughs> good luck with that, right? They want to order a fleet of endurance vehicle-to-grid pickups, uh, uh, virtual uh, via uh, Nuvo or Nuvi or uh, Lenvo. Hey, guess what? You're in luck, okay? Because Lordstown has the chips. Big deal. Also, by design, Endurance is a simpler product. It, it's a fleet design. It's utilitarian, smaller, smaller screen, fewer screens. has knobs, right? I think. No cruise control, no self-driving, no fancy climate control, right? The only thing they got is the wheel. The wheel controllers have chip, chips, battery inverters have chips okay but it's not like 
a fully option F-150 Lightning, which is what they've sold the most of, the most expensive ones, excuse me. They're going to be full of chips. So they're going to be delayed even more. Um, and their fleet truck, I'm sure, also has chips. They got a differential in the back that's a mechanical differential that is electronically controlled and driven by an electric motor. How many chips are in that alone? Think about it. Okay, forget about everything else. Uh, much simpler, the endurance is. You know, they can even make it more simple. Okay? Because they're kind of pre-production now. They're still cheap. They could reduce chips. So the endurance has the chips to put in, and they need fewer chips, I believe, to, to manufacture their car. Uh, so Floor feeds up. Floors has 100K orders for the most posh F-150 Lightning so far. And they have a limited number of chips. They're going to this model, too. Will they produce fleet Lightnings? And allocate the chips to lower profit vehicles? I don't think they will. I think that they are going to put those chips in their highest profit vehicles because they're going to have reduced unit sales. This could lead to a position where, you know, their their fleet sales were down 26% last year. They could be down again. This could be a big opening for the endurance. Hey, we want to go to electric fleet. What's our choice? Well, we could order it from Ford. It's going to take 90 to 120 days. Or we could order it from Lordstown. And we can have it in 30 days. Get my drift. So, they have the first year of production laid out now they've moved this ahead i don't know this is my estimation of the situation maybe i'm wrong maybe my information isn't correct but they have paused uh production to start next year so 2022 they should have be ready to rock and roll whereas everybody else is going to be crippled by the sh chip shortage thing uh Okay, this is the catalyst. Once they have a product, they can talk sales in order. You know, um, this is what I mentioned earlier. They got it, you know, I'm sure their lawyers are, they're talking to their lawyers right now. What, what, what is the operational de definition of a product? As soon as they have a product, they can talk about orders. Okay? It's going to be a big deal. At some point, they should be able to announce... Or make forecasts and you know this is going to be a huge huge uh, catalyst for Nordston going forward uh, chip, chip issue will be there LMC has a chips for one year production which has been pushed to 2022 and Intel, Intel will have production up it's said in six to nine months let's make that a year three months to start distribution change that puts new chip supply starting December 2022 so LMA LMC should be able to do production right up to that point so while everybody else is waiting for this timeline to develop where more chips will be in supply LMC is going to be working that whole time they should be able to produce right up to that point then hopefully, as soon as they run out of their supply, they're going to get a new supply chain and continue uh, production without a hitch. So it's going to work out. And while everybody else is going to be crippled uh, in production during the chip shortage, LMC isn't. By the time they start up, there should be uh, a new supply chain ready. So LMC has a chance to leapfrog everybody in the market and still be... <laughs> Basically, the first start, the first starter, first one. So theoretically, LM, LMC can dodge the chip shortage and uh, and uh, maintain production without reduction going forward, providing they can get funding to go into production. Now, they have said that they have enough funding uh, to do the first year of production. 
Uh, the going concern statement said May of next year they're going to be out of money. I don't know. There's a bunch of different things on this. They have ways of raising money. So they have funding in hand to get this certification. Okay. Now, once they get this certification, if this operationally defines a product, they got enough money to start production, but they're going to need more money to, to do production. Uh, so let's say they're pushing it ahead. So they said May then under the old schedule, May, June, July. So they got till August of next year, probably. September, October, December. Uh, May, June, July. They got like till September of next year before they have to, to uh, raise money. So this is rough back of the envelope. So September of next year is where they're going to have to raise money by. So they have the chips. They can leapfrog everybody. Um, they can get into production next year. They should be able to run out of chips right when the new chips become available without interrupting their production schedule at all. Once they're certified, they should be able to talk about how many orders they have. Stock price should go up. Once they're in production, have uh, are able to talk about sales, I think they're not going to have any money or any problem raising money. Anyway, this is a pretty rosy scenario. I could be wrong. I'm just laying this out, but this this whole chip thing is is a big plus for Lordstown. They're in the catboard seat. I think Ford. I don't know how Ford could sacrifice uh, those hundred thousand dollar Lightnings for fleet sales. I don't think they. I, I don't know. Can they do it? I don't know. Do they have the intestinal fortitude? I don't know. Anyway. That's all I have to say, guys. Again, we're looking at what they say. September next year It's when they're going to have to have the big money. And by that time, all this should have been done. So that's my take on it. I hope you guys like the video. Probably going to do a close on this. Thanks for watching. Guys, please subscribe. i got to get my subscriber count up. If you like Lordstown... Because there ain't many of us Lordstowners out there. We all gotta we all gotta get together on this. You all gotta support me. This motley fool, these idiots, I'll tell you, the stuff they're putting out, it's it's terrible. And and this this company is the most misunderstood company in the world right now. And um, you know, the price is low, the stock price is falling. I think that's a new low. So anyway, this is a pre-revenue SPAC risk on investment do your due diligence it could result in catastrophic losses all right thanks this is mxux hi this is mxux that's the end of the video i'm not a financial advisor do not take this as financial advice do your own dd this is a pre-revenue SPAC could result in catastrophic losses having said that that little circle down there with the palm tree and the roller skaters in it is the subscribe button. Could you press it, please? Quit being so tight with them clicks. Subscribe and get more information on Lordstown. I also cover, cover many other topics, Aptera, so forth. Thanks a lot for watching. This is MXUX.